I'm Arya Schwartz, along with my co-host, the great Rachel Galligan, and welcome to the Windsider Film Room. This episode, we're big hype to welcome the second pick in the 22 WNBA draft, a superstar rising, Nalissa Smith of the Indiana Fever. So very excited to kind of pick your brain and your game. Welcome to the show. How you doing? I'm good. Appreciate y'all having me. So Rachel and I have been really excited and big fans of your game. Rachel, during your college time, me, once you got to the W and I got to see just the ridiculous skill that you have. But something that's really, really impressed me is is the growth that we've seen from season one to season two. Um, now, we all know that you went off to AU, you brought home the hardware, but what went into your preparation coming into season two and, and kind of what were some mindsets and things you wanted to focus on in, in getting ready for your second season? I feel like it was just improving on everything that I was already doing. I feel like it was just like, you know, like perfecting some things that uh, I was already doing my first year, like, you know, driving harder. I wanted to get to the free throw line a lot more this year than I did last year. And then I wanted to, you know, shoot the three more consistently. So that's what I've been working on the most. That's awesome. And did you have any like personal goals coming into the season? I know some people like to set benchmarks or something. Uh, it was really like average a double double, you know, be consistent, um, all star, you know, make playoffs, stuff like that. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Well, let's jump right into the film. Um, for those of you who are just joining us on our film room for the first time, we're gonna take we're gonna go through some action pretty much. Melissa, just tell us what is going on in this play, what you might be seeing. I'll kind of give you a little prelude as to what we're getting ready to see in these few clips. Um, but just your mentality. I think one thing I love about you is that motor you play with. Um, and I want to talk, I want to ask you about confidence a little bit later on because this, I've watched you for years and the level of confidence you play with is off the charts, but we'll get into that in a little Appreciate bit. Appreciate that. Yeah, I, I see that probably more than maybe the best in the league, in my opinion. Thank and I, that's probably the one thing I love the most about you. But we'll jump right in. And, and right off the bat, we talked about those hustle plays. Um, you just pursuing the offensive glass on this shot. Now, this looks like a pretty easy shot. That's a simple shot. Again, simple action. The shot goes up. You're just pursuing it. But what's going on in, in your mind? And I think a lot of players don't quite understand how to be a good offensive rebounder. And so just kind of talk me through that and what you're seeing and what makes you so great at that. I think my biggest thing, also a goal that I had missed was I wanted to be the best rebounder in the league. So I feel like that's one of my things that I could be great at is rebounding. You know, I love to rebound. I feel like everybody could score. Everybody, you know, could de defend when they want to, but not everybody wants to rebound. So I think my biggest thing is I always want to rebound. I want to have like the most rebounds in every game. And on this shot, like, you can tell like you're bodying Stewie right there, like keeping her on that back side of your right hip. Like, are you watching the flight of the ball in this scenario to figure out where it is? Oh uh, yeah. I feel like anytime, like anytime anybody shoots, I'm just always going to go rebound, whether, you know, they're a 90% three point shooter. Like I feel like eventually like somebody's going to miss. And I feel like I want to be that person to get the rebound every time. Now we've got a little screening action. Another thing you talked about, your ability to stretch the floor and shoot the three. Um, we're going to see you kind of little dribble handoff, re-screening, and then you see that dribble penetration. you out there stretching the floor. Now, simple action. It's ran all the time with you, but what do you love about being in this scenario? And what are you reading as you see M Mitchell kind of come off that action? Um, I feel like just seeing how deep she's going to go, you know, dribbling the ball on uh... – if she's going to go get the layup or if not. So when she bounces it out, you know, I know I'm a pop because AB is in the paint. So I already knew I was there for the crack bet. So I just knew I had to knock it down. And you obviously, she has just enough, you know, dribble penetration to draw that defender. And mm -hmm. that's a horse shot. I mean, that's a horse shot. You've been so good at that all year. Um, again, going back to your motor and just how much you attack the offensive glass. I mean, Anybody who has played or coached basketball will say when a shot goes up, what is it, 70, 80 percent of the time, where is it going to go? The opposite block. I mean, clearly you're in great position here to be able to go get that. Um, but just anything on this play in particular that stands out to you? Oh, no, I think like on every play, like I said, I'm just going to go in and rebound. You know, I'm going to first make contact. I, I hardly make contact with defenders. I honestly just try to out jump everybody. <laughs> so that could be a good or a bad thing. <laughs> well, I mean, 
I just love the battle here. I mean, you miss it, you get your own read back, you put it back up, and then we get a little emotion. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Now this action, um, a little bit of cross screen action down on the block, um, showing again, like your versatility, you can face up, you can shoot the three, you can play with your back to the basket. So we see a little cross screen here from Mitchell down on the block post entry to you over there on, you're kind of, you're just going to kind of back them down and reverse layup. What are you seeing here? What are you reading here on this particular action? I mean, clearly this is for you to get a touch down on the block. Um, I feel like I was kind of reading just like if it was a one-on-one. -on -one. So I know like if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, I know that I got to make a quick move because sometimes the double comes. So I knew I had like a stronger defender on me. So nine times out of 10, I'm going to try to beat him with speed going baseline rather than trying to bang with him the whole time. And it's so interesting, like, okay, I was a post player. I was a center. I could not do anywhere near what you could do. But <laughs> so many people, you know, they get so rushed down on the block. Mm -hmm. Like you said, being able to, like, have a second and be poised and check your defense and figure out who is coming. You catch the ball there for a second, and you you take a moment to kind of see what 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 is going to happen. And you realize in that moment where you catch the ball, it is a one-on-one -on -one scenario. And then I, mm -hmm. I love being able to penetrate baseline with that reverse layup. Again, the versatility of your game. When do you feel like you added your ability to kind of not just face up, but like be be so aggressive off the dribble? When did you add that to your game? I mean, I know I know I watched it in Baylor, but when did you feel yeah. like you kind of expanded that? I definitely feel like college. I feel like college was kind of like I was always in that high post area. So I knew like it was either going to be a shower or a drive. And then once I kind of like learned like the type of player I could be, where it was like, you know, like I'm like an undersized post, like they say. So I knew I always had to beat people with like speed and like athleticism. So I think driving to the basket has just always been one of my like best qualities that I could bring to the table. Another little screen and pop. Well, this might have been a dribble handoff. Let me see. It cuts off pretty early. But um, what I love is your versatility. You know, you're able to kind of, whether this was a dribble handoff or a screen, I think it might end up being a screen. But um, a nice little behind the back pass there from Kelsey Mitchell. I love the head fake that you just did. And then being able to tack off the dribble. So many parts of this play right here that showcase what you can do. Walk us through this one. I think this one was all about just uh, reading the defense. You know, a lot of people are going to go with Kelsey Mitchell because she's such a threat. So it was all about how slow that the defense had came back out. So I knew I had to drive and I knew I wasn't going to shoot that. So <laughs> I had to just drive to the basket. <laughs> I mean, but like, here's my question. How do you, because that's a lot of space right there. I mean, how do, you sure. know, how do you know in your mind that like, you're not going to just at the way, at the way she's running out yet at you, she's not yeah, close yeah, yeah. She's running out at you. For sure, probably the angle. I feel like she was closing out like with a lot of speed. So, you know, you can attack when they're just not like a, a fast close. I already know I'm going to attack them. You almost yeah. sent her slide in there, too. She's lucky she had some uh, grip on the bottom of those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, now we've got, um, again, a little bit of just high post action. This is such a deadly spot for you, in my opinion, with your ability to pass, shoot, hand off, you know, everything you can do, attack off the dribble. Um, you know, again, reverse pivot, look and surveying the floor and then just being aggressive. What, what are your thought process on this one? What do I think? Let me see. It almost seems like there's a little bit of an overload on the other side of the floor. Yeah. Um, and, and you really do take some time to really read the floor and what's going on before you decide to attack. Nah, for sure. That that's the same thing I see. I, I kind of turned and seen how much space I had and seen how everybody was on the other side. So I knew also it was gonna be a one-on-one -on -one situation. And is that a place you like to you like to operate in? Is up in the high post? Yeah, yeah I love the high post. Why? Cause I feel like you could do a lot more at the high post than kind of being uh on the block. So high post, I know I could like dribble more. I could just catch and shoot, one dribble, pull up, drive to the basket. Like, I feel like the high post is my main scoring area that I like to be in. And can we talk about your ability to finish through that contact? I mean, that was a tough finish. I'm just going to say. That's, that's, that's a tough. big girl move right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You do a lot of those, to say the least. Um, looks like we've got, um, what do we got here? 
Okay, so this is some interesting action for me. This is like a little bit of, I don't know if it's like a, a down screen, but the angle that it's set up by Boston is is basically, I don't know if you're supposed to catch it out here on the on the wing or if you're supposed to catch it in the high post. But again, getting you up into that sweet spot area where you can be effective, is this action that you guys work on a lot? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I feel like it's, it's a hard read when uh, Aaliyah is, you know, setting that down screen because a lot of people are going to sag off. So I feel like once she sets that down screen, it gives me an opportunity just to read the defense. And can we talk about this finish here? So first and foremost, the shot fake and how you sold that. Elite, love that. But being able to protect the ball against Griner with the length. One of the is, greatest blockers in league history. I mean, that's that's a pro finish. That is an unbelievable finish, but a lot of people wouldn't even attempt that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a lot of people, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, not for sure. That, that, Scare that money don't make money. There we go. Your ability, <laughs> I love that. Your ability to stride out and use your length to protect the basketball in that scenario. I mean, it looks so simple, but it's not. Oh, yeah, it's definitely not. She's super long. But yeah, yeah, just decided not to use that extra dribble and, and finishing at the lane. Okay, now I'm not trying to call you out on this one, but okay, we're talking uh -oh. about motor <laughs> plays and <laughs> plays. You're at the free throw line, you miss it. There's an offensive rebound that's missed. And I just want people to watch how much you pursue this basketball. I mean, again, any young player, anybody who's coached, people are constantly talking about, again, that the pursuit of the ball, following your own shot, just being aggressive and hunting those opportunities. You do it so instinctively. Um, and obviously Boston does a great job, but you flying in there, there's nobody in that scenario that can block you out. So what are you reading here? I mean, again, you've, you've, you've said it three times already, but obviously Boston goes back up and you just, you just see an opportunity here. For sure. Uh, like I said, <laughs> I just feel like, you never know when someone's going to miss. So, like, I feel like it's just, like, it's just, like, something you want to do. Like, I want to rebound, like, every game. So, I knew she had, like, three, four people on her, and there was a possibility that she was going to miss it. So, I knew they weren't going to box me out way out there. That's how so I got many, that. So many people would just be backpedaling. You know what I'm saying? And, and look at Not this. for sure. Well, you go get it with one and pull it. Whew. Look at Tarasi's body language after that play. It's like, what are you going to do? Like, I can't do anything to that. Like, um, let's 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 get into a little bit of defense. I mean, you've got some rim protection to yourself, some versatility in the way you defend. Um, this one, we've got a little bit of a, a penetrate and drive, and you're able to come over and 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 alter this shot. Tell me what you're seeing. And get the ball. <laughs> and gets the ball. Uh, yeah, I feel like um, they always just always tell us, like, to be in help in every situation. So whenever, whenever anybody drives, I feel like I just dropped and then luckily got to block. I don't even really be blocking shots. That's why sometimes I'd be surprising myself. Well, we're going to make you feel like a shot blocker after this one because we've got <laughs> Um, the, the cool thing is, is you, you're really, um, I'm going through these, these different films and I'm looking at a much, I mean, I watch you all the time, but I'm watching much closely trying to put this together. And I'm realizing how much you do get your hands on the basketball, whether it's a deflection mm -hmm. or whether it's a block, or you come up with a block and in, in, in a possession like that, which I think is a really, another really good aspect of your game. Okay. On this action here, we've got Kelsey Plum, um, penetrating into the paint. I think you do a really good job kind of on that help side rotation, um, just really being there in positioning. Um, and, and what I love about this play is you get the stop, but look how you're running the floor and your ability mm -hmm. to run the floor, beat others down the floor, catch it in transition and just be aggressive. Um, you know, And get be, the ball back. Yeah, and get the ball back and make multiple plays in a couple of different possessions. A lot we can talk about here. Um, let's, we'll, start, we'll, we'll start defensively. Um, I guess if that makes the most sense again on this plum drive, you're over there on help side, another block, yeah. another block <laughs> and running the floor. I mean, you get up and down the court as well as anybody that I've seen and just battling at the rim. What, what are you thinking about when you're running the floor in a play like that, especially when you just made a defensive stop? Yeah. I feel like, um, I feel like those are the easiest points to get is by just outrunning somebody and, you know, like, they just tell me, like, on every possession, like, just run the floor hard and the guards will be looking for you. So I feel like once I got that block and I seen someone else get it, 
I just seen an opportunity for me to get an easy two points. Do you and run a lot? Rebound. Do you like do you do, run? do you run a lot for training? Like because you are fast as all hell. <laughs> no, I don't. Surprisingly, <laughs> I don't be running. <laughs> I just be playing like a lot of pickup and stuff, so I always just be going up and down. All right, another defensive possession. You've got you're playing a little bit of defense. You're sneaky on the post. I will give you that. Um, looks like you're guarding Wilson here on this next possession. Could be a tough situation, you know. Asia Wilson's got you pinned that mm -hmm. low into the paint, but you're able to kind of maneuver your your body and come around with a deflection. And, um, as simple as this looks, you're not you're not allowing yourself to get buried into the paint. Um, mm. so how are you able to kind of get out of that seal and and you know get this deflection? Well, I seen how far she was passing it from, so I knew the ball was going to be floating in the air for a long time. I like so that. I knew I had time to you know get around her before I got buried and got a foul. So I feel like that's that was the main thing. And the thing about you, too, is like you can grab a rebound or you can get a deflection or come up with a steal and just advance the ball down the floor yourself. I mean, uh, behind the back. Yep. <laughs> Here, OK, I have to ask this. Like, when did you have your height growth spurt? Because you've got handles behind the back. <laughs> no, I've been told my whole life. For real. OK, <laughs> so you just always had the handles. OK. Yeah, a little, little something like that. Because I feel like a lot of players younger, they're like, all right, you're good, you're a point guard, and then they get the growth sprints, like, all right, forget the dribbling part. Yeah, no, nah, I've always been a post player. <laughs> but, I, I mean, it's funny because, I mean, I know for me, again, I was a center, but, like, they threw me on the block, and there was no advancing the ball up the floor myself. That was such a rare mm -hmm. a former college coach and professional player myself, like the things that were looked for in elite post play – who can grab a rebound and just take it themselves? Is that something mm -hmm. you've always been able to do? I feel like it's something I've improved on. Like, uh, I probably say like between last year and my senior year in college, just having coaches that give you the opportunity to do that. Like a lot of coaches, like you say, will tell you like, you know, get the ball, look for the guards. But I feel like the coaches that I had always were like, just take it, like take it till you can't. And that's when I, I just do it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you just took it against two people. I mean, yeah, I mean, love that. Perimeter defense on this one. Again, another um, deflection on the post. Um, being able to kind of have a closeout. I mean, Clark gets by you a little bit here, um, but she gets into the paint. You're able to have that backside rotation. She's not able to dump the ball down. And again, another deflection. Um take us through the start of this closeout and then that backside rotation where you're able to get a deflection. Oh uh, yeah. Like you said, it was, it was a bad closeout. So I knew I was already beat. <laughs> so I had to, uh, I had to drop and I knew she wasn't going to go up for the layup against Aaliyah Boston. So I knew when I dropped, it was probably going to be a, a float floating pass in the air. So thank God I got that. But that's, but that's like, you, you're sticking with it. Right. I mean, like you right. might, might miss an assignment you might have a breakdown here and there but that's what what defense is all about you've got your teammates rotating in the middle and and you you know they're trusting you on the backside to be where you want to be for and sure you know those rotations you guys we've, drill constantly. we've done a few like 11 of these film rooms and you're the first player to talk so focused on the travel of the ball and i think that really speaks to why you're such a good rebounder because you're so aware wherever you are on the court. I mean, when we're watching you get these rebounds and even here on this play, your head's on a swivel. You're aware of where everybody is on the court at any given moment. And I just feel like that's next level mental game. It's wild. Appreciate that. We bring you on the show just to, you know, pump you up. Like, <laughs> right, a little confidence boost. Oh, look, look, not, not that you need it. Okay, that's, 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 a, that's a good transition before our last play. Your level of confidence, where does that come from? I think it just comes from just my competitiveness. I think like I always just want to be the best player in anything that I'm doing. I think it also comes just how I was raised in my family. Like we was just competitive in everything, like whether it was board games, like running down the street, like just anything. It was always like we wanted to win in it. So I just feel like I just translate that to basketball. I and mean, I just love playing basketball. Like I, I don't know. I just it's like what I want to do for the rest of my life.
well, we want we want to see you do it for the rest of our lives. We'll finish this last play again, <laughs> another just reading the fly to the ball and not allowing yourself to get sealed. Um, and a little bit of advance up the floor yourself, but okay, I'm not done with the confidence thing. My question for you is, you have a lot of rookies who, you know, you are at the pinnacle of your collegiate career. You've had a lot of success. You know, at, at, by the time you're at your senior year, it's your team. That confidence isn't necessarily an issue at the level we're talking about. Then you make the transition mm -hmm. to the WNBA. And there's got to be an element of like your head is spinning. Um, you're going up against Candace Parker, Diana Taurasi, Brittany Griner, you know, players that you have watched probably since you were young or have idolized for, for, for a young time. And I, I would think for me, I would struggle um, in, in those scenarios and feel small or feel like, man, this is really going to take a, le a level of just adjustment, um, a level of mentally adjusting, a level of just getting that confidence that I had, what, just a couple months ago in college <laughs> to be able to have that back in the in the pro leagues, we see players that it takes several years. For you, you didn't skip a beat. And I know I'm not asking this in the easiest way, but how? You know, I just want to know how. That's always been the thing that's impressed me with you the most is there was never any like like okay, let's reset this. Let she she gets broken down as a rookie in the WNBA and she's got to build herself back up. You you seamlessly transitioned and were the player that I watched in March and the player the same player that I watched in July. How'd you do that? I feel like it's it's just the players that we're playing against. Like you said, they're the best players in like the world. You know, we're playing against 143 best players in the world. And I feel like I just always set these goals for myself where whether it's like top rebounder, you know, average 20 and 10, do this, do that. So I feel like I'm very like just goal oriented where it's like, I want to push myself to achieve these goals. And that's what just helps me play hard. And then it's like being a four player, like all the great players are like four players. And I feel like me playing against the Asia Wilsons and Brianna Stewart's and, you know, like all these great four players, it's like, well, if I could play against them, then what, like, what does that make me? Like, I'm going to be one of the best four players soon, you know, in my career. So I feel like also playing against them motivates me. And, you know, it's a confidence booster to me where it's like, if I can get 20 and 10 against them, then it's like, maybe I'll be like the next best player that other people are talking about when they come into the league and they're going to try to, you know, outdo me. Is there a, you don't get intimidated. You must, nah. you must, you must not get intimidated. <laughs> no, nah, I don't. I love playing against the best players. I love that. I love that. I know Ari wants to take you through some rapid fire. So go ahead. That's and take so cool. I, I got some fun questions for you. We say rapid fire. If you need a second to think about it, take your time. Uh, <laughs> who, who is your WNBA GOAT? My WNBA GOAT? Probably uh, Stewie. Okay. Ooh. You're down two. Ten seconds left in the game. Are you taking a three? Or are you going to tie the game? Tie the game? Because we're going to win in overtime. Okay, okay. <laughs> Would you prefer, what gets you more hyped, I guess? A block, an and one, or taking a charge? And one. You ain't going to see me taking no charges. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite travel destination that you've been to? Travel destination I've been to? Uh, I'd probably say Italy. We went to Italy in college. Yes, I yeah, very very much yes. agree with that one. Uh, who, and this can be siblings, this can be friends growing up, this can be college, whatever. Who was the biggest trash talker you've ever faced? Oh, biggest trash talker, or or WNBA. Anyone. Yeah, at, at any point in your life, it could be like you know Joe Schmo off the the pickup game on Tuesdays. <laughs> I'll probably say my brother, honestly. My brother is the biggest trash. Like, he still thinks to this day he could beat me in one-on-one, -on -one, which is crazy. <laughs> like, because he's, like, 5'8". He do, like, he's, like, owns a radio station. Like, what makes you think you could beat me in one-on-one? -on -one? And I, he'll, you know, still, he'll still think to this day he can. It's crazy. We should, should do it. We And then we should film it. I would. Yes. Like no, we should do it. Please, please, <laughs> somebody film it. Why do I feel like he's the type of person who might, the tapes might get lost? <laughs> the tapes might get right. well. He's just going to foul the whole game, and he's going to tell you that. <laughs> he's going to foul the whole game. He, he's got a, a got a system. Okay, who has been the toughest player you've had to defend? And you can't say your brother on this one. You can't You can't no, give him that compliment. He's not the toughest player. <laughs> uh, the toughest player I had to defend. 
let's see who really like killed me. Um, toughest player I had to defend. I probably say like really thinking on this one. I know. I don't know. <laughs> I would say like a uh, Alyssa Thomas. Just because of how strong she is. Like, I don't think I've ever met somebody that strong before. Yeah. No, I That's, mean, I, he's just, yeah. I don't Hit know me in my to... chest one time. I ain't even want to play defense no more. Seriously. It's like a freight train. <laughs> like, That's amazing. Uh, Best meal or favorite food? Favorite food? Probably like chicken and rice or pizza. Love it. And when you were growing up, who was a player you looked up to in any sport? Uh, Candace Parker. She was like the player I looked up to, the player I modeled my game after. That's so cool. See, you can see parts of that. I love that. Well, Nalissa, thank you so much for coming on our show, for breaking down the film for, for the fans. Um, we I speak for everybody. We appreciate you. We love watching you. Um, thank thank you. the world of you and cannot wait to get to see you back out on the floor. Good luck the rest of the season. Appreciate that.